Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dimitrios Lignos. I'm an assistant professor at McGill University in Montreal. And today I'll be talking about uh, uh, recently uh, implemented deterioration models in the OpenSys uh, platform. So, uh, uh, essentially, two models uh, have been implemented in the OpenSys uh, simulation platform. Um, these models are uh, uh, modified versions of uh, the original Ibarra Medina Kravinkler model that were developed in uh, 2005 at Stanford University. And essentially, these models uh, have been refined by um, uh, myself and Professor Kravinkler in uh, 2011. Uh, so these models uh, utilize uh, a deterioration uh, uh, model with peak-oriented and pinched hysteresis response uh, that you actually see in these two figures and I'll go in detail in the next uh, slides. And um, uh, the advantage of these models compared to others is that it can be used for collapsed assessment of uh, deteriorating structural systems subjected to earthquake loading. So um, the way to use the two material models uh, that are discussed uh, is essentially by assigning zero length springs that are typically located at the end of structural elements. So this is a concentrated plasticity concept. And uh, these springs are connected with elastic beam columns um, to represent the structural component as part of a building. So here is an example of a three-story moment resistant frame and uh, one uh, uh, beam has been um, uh, uh, one beam has been actually um, uh, taken apart from the building and um, uh, is shown here with the two zero length rotational springs that uh, one has to assign these two elements uh, that I'll be talking today now uh, the first one, which is the modified Ibarra Medina Kravinkler model with peak oriented hysteretic response. Uh, like, uh, in order to uh, define it, you need to define a backbone curve. So, essentially, somebody has to define an elastic stiffness, the uh, pre capping rotation capacity, post capping rotation capacity, a residual strength uh, region, and an ultimate deformation uh, capacity in case of um, uh, complete loss of strength. Now, the advantage of this model is that uh, it can, uh, compared to others, is that it can uh, deteriorate in strength, post capping strength, uh, reloading stiffness, and unloading stiffness with uh, four uh, parameters that uh, control the energy dissipation capacity of uh, the component. Uh, now, moving on this, to this slide that shows uh, the first example. Uh, that um, uh, one can use the model that uh, was just described. So here uh, what you see is a fully symmetric uh, hysteretic response that is used as a base case of this presentation. And uh, these are the parameters that define the hysteretic response of the component. So as you see, the component can deteriorate in strength, post-capping strength, and attains a residual uh, uh, path. Now, this uh, model can be fully asymmetric, and uh, this is illustrated in a moment rotation uh, uh, relationship uh, that is shown here. So the parameters that have changed compared to the base case are highlighted with a red color. And as you see, uh, the model is completely asymmetric in positive and negative loading directions. Now moving on to the... Uh, uh, effect of uh, various parameters on the hysteretic response uh, of uh, a structural component. Like what you see here is again the base case in terms of moment rotation. Uh, in uh, the figure on the right, you see the effect of residual strength on the hysteretic response of uh, uh, the structural component when uh, zero uh, residual strength is uh, assumed you see that the component fully deteriorates all the way down to zero strength. Now, in uh, the third figure, uh, you see the effect of cyclic deterioration parameters that in this case are selected to be 0.8 compared to 1 uh, with the base case. And you see that um, you have like faster cyclic deterioration in strength and stiffness compared to the base case. Now, in the last figure, you see the effect of post-capping rotation and this smooth transition 
uh, to post capping range compared to the base case that the post capping rotation capacity of 0.01 radians uh, is assumed. Uh, moving on to the next element, uh, here you see pretty much uh, the modified Ibarra Medina Kravinkler model with pinched hysteretic response. This model is fully defined in the same way uh, with the previous one uh, that you just saw, but uh, one has to define three additional parameters that uh, control pinching. Um, now again, uh, for illustration purposes, uh, this slide shows uh, uh, this particular model uh, that was discussed in the previous slide. And uh, here on the left you see the uh, um, assumed parameters uh, to define the hysteretic response of this particular component. And as you see in this case, this is a fully symmetric hysteretic response that is used as a base case. And again, the model deteriorates in the same way for positive loading uh, uh, direction and negative loading direction and finally attains a residual path which is said to be 30% of the uh, yield strength uh, of the component. Now again the model can be fully asymmetric in terms of hysteretic response. This uh, can be useful for the case that you have to simulate uh, reinforced concrete uh, beams including the effect of slabs um, on its hysteretic response. And uh, again, with uh, red, has been highlighted uh, the individual parameter that has been changed compared to the base case that you saw in slide number nine. Again, uh, in terms of moment rotation, the model can uh, be fully asymmetric as the picture shows. Now, this slide uh, shows uh, the effect of individual parameters on the uh, moment rotation uh, relationship uh, of a structural component that uh, utilizes the modified Ibarra Medina Kravinkler model with pinched hysteretic response. So, again, as a reference, uh, in the first figure, uh, the base case is shown. In the second figure, on the left, uh, the effect of uh, residual strength on the hysteretic response of the structural component is shown. So in the case of zero residual uh, strength, you see that uh, the model is able to deteriorate all the way down to zero bending strength. Uh, in the third figure, you can see what is the effect of pinching parameters uh, on the hysteretic response of the component. So remember in the base case, these parameters were said to be equal to 0.2. And you see how different it could be uh, when uh, somebody puts emphasis on pinching. Now in the last uh, example, uh, the effect of post-capping rotation on the hysteretic response of the structural component is uh, shown. And again, if one uses a larger post-capping rotation capacity compared to the base case where these values are assumed to be 0.01 radians, you see that there's a smooth transition to post-capping range. Now, these two models have been extensively calibrated um, uh, with uh, experimental data uh, of uh, reinforced concrete beams. And uh, here you see uh, four cases uh, where in the first three, uh, the uh, modified Ibarra Medina Kravinkler model with peak oriented hysteretic response is utilized, or in the last case, uh, the modified Ibarra Medina Gravilgator with pinched hysteristic response uh, is utilized. And uh, you can see that the model is able to uh, represent reasonably well the moment rotation uh, uh, diagrams of uh, the individual components, including uh, the post-capping range and the severe strength and stiffness deterioration that you observe in these specimens. Now, for uh, further uh, uh, information regarding the original and the modified uh, Barra Medina Kravinkler models. Um, here's a list of references that uh, one could actually uh, uh, read. And uh, with that, uh, uh, this concludes my presentation. I'd like to thank for your attention and in case that uh, there are further questions, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me uh, through email.